Can you see my screen okay? Okay, cool. So welcome everyone. So I'm gonna be talking about a project I've been working on for the last couple of months. So I'm sure some of you are familiar with our lab manuals. So we have a and and Atlas lab manuals and we get a lot of feedback on them that they're really helpful and really excellent, but there's some challenges with them. Um, we made them so students could type in answers, but there's problems because professors aren't able to edit the questions and the fact that these are really long, maybe instructors don't wanna include all of this material. Um, plus it's a lot of grading for the instructor part, especially since now that most people are remote. Um, so I created the auto-graded labs course in Courseware. So um, it's auto-graded because it involves no manual grading from the instructors. So it's made up entirely of reading materials and then dissection and multiple choice quizzes. And all of those quizzes are in the VB question bank. So you can go in and edit them however you want. You can add questions of your own. So it's completely up to you what you wanna do with it. Um, and it contains all the normal course rep functionalities. You can edit, you can move folders around. So it's everything that you're used to. We're just giving you this sort of more lab approach base. Um, so if you look down here, these are all the topics that are covered in the Autograded Labs course. So you can see there's a bunch of them. So what I did instead of having one lab that was just like one really long lab on say the respiratory system, I broke it up. Um, so then it's easier for students to, it's not as overwhelming for students and then for instructors, it's easier for them to manage and edit. So instead of having the respiratory system lab, I broke it up into three separate labs. So it's the upper respiratory, lower respiratory, and then respiration. And a nice bonus for this course is um, I created labs for the endocrine and lymphatic systems, which don't currently have lab manuals. So that's an extra bonus. So if you wanted to add this course to your coursework account, you would just go to instructor resources click on pre-made courses and it's the first course so you just add course to my account you can make whatever name you want so i'm going to save that and then this is the course each lab has its own folder so if i want to click into primary endocrine organs each um, folder comes with a lesson plan so if you want to click on that, open that up. It's a Word document, so you do have the ability to edit anything out that you don't want or add additional material. So we just say what resources the students would um, be using. So it's just A and P and then courseware. So we give learning objectives. These are the same learning objectives that are already in A and P with um, a few additions. And then there's some essential questions that students should be able to answer upon completing the entire lab. And kind of the main component of an anatomy lab is a lot of dissecting and discovering and identifying structures. So we have this key structure identification where we name the asset name from A and P and then list out the structures that students should be able to identify in the lab. And then we break down the three components of the lab. So each lab is broken up into a pre-lab, a lab activity, and then putting it all together. So the pre-lab is designed to give um, just some basic overarching um, material that students should know before completing the lab activity. So let's say if um, students were actually going into an anatomy lab, this would what they should know before going into lab itself. Um, so that consists of some reference material from A and P, and then um, we created these pre-lab dissection multiple choice quizzes. So they're just three to five questions. They're very short, and it's just some basic questions. And we wanted to give instructors the option to choose either dissection or multiple choice. And then if you want to use one or the other, it's totally up to you. And then we have the lab activity, which is, um, mostly 3D models, so it's identifying, and that includes reference material, and then a longer lab activity. 
And then lastly is the putting it all together. So this brings together 3D models from the activity and the pre-lab, and it presents a more challenging topic and um, sometimes mixes in some physiology with that. So going into, back into the folder. So for the primary endocrine organs lab, they would go into the pre-lab, they would watch an overview of the endocrine system, and then they would explore two assets on primary organs and then secondary organs. Um, just waiting for this to open. So they would explore the assets, um, click on any structures so they would know which ones are primary and then which ones are secondary. And then they would go into the next step, which is to take a pre-lab quiz. So instructors can go in and edit um, the two quizzes. So these would appear in your question bank and then you can decide if you wanna clone the um, quiz and add your own questions or delete any questions. They're both very brief, um, just to get students ready for um, the in-lab activity. So if we go back. The next step would be the in-lab activity, which is a bulk of the lab itself. So in this, they would be looking more in depth at the primary endocrine organs, and then um, looking at more structure and function, you know, what um, hormones are being produced and what effect do those hormones have. And then they would go and take a lab activity. So if we take a look at that, they would be identifying more structures. And then we also added some new questions that are more second order questions that bring together structure and function just to challenge students a little bit more. And then if we go back, the last step would be the putting it all together. So for this one, they would look at an illustration 3D view of blood glucose level and stress response. So that's bringing together what they learned about the pancreas being a primary endocrine organ. And then they would do their own explore, exploration of what hormones the pancreas releases when blood glu glucose is high or whether it's low and similar as in stress response as well. Does anyone have any questions so far? Doesn't look like it in the chat, but um, I will uh, give it, I, I think we should give it like 30 seconds just in case. Okay. Uh, we do. We have a question from Glenn, um, and he asks, are there any practice quizzes not worth any points? So, Laura, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's up to the instructor to, to decide if they want to have those activities and quizzes count for points. You know, it's actually, um, thanks for bringing that up, Glenn. That is something that's been on our list to have them be no customizable with no points. So right now, um, practice quizzes would be just in the AMP app itself or in the Atlas app itself. Um, but we do have it on our list. We know that customizing quizzes um, for no points is important, um, but we just don't have that available yet. Um, so with Lizzie's quizzes um, that she's showing you and how you can customize it, um, you know, right, you could make it one point. Um, but not zero. So I think, yeah, Glenn was asking what that too. Yep, graded quiz is now worth one point. Yep, you can do it one point and that'll be fine, but just not zero yet. Awesome. And uh, we, have, uh, we have one from Margaret. Um, 
and uh, Rachel and Carly, feel free to jump in um, on this too. How do you get this into a, a course that is already created? So I can probably show that right here. If you decide you want the secondary endocrine organs lab, you can go copy the folder and then decide which course you want to put it in. So if I put it here and save that. And then the folder appears in that course. Yep, that's a great point and a great question to bring up because you can add, you can make this your own, its own individual standalone course, or you can add the labs into your existing ones. Um, so either way, works great. Okay, awesome. I think those were uh, the only. Oh no, we have uh, a late breaking question from Marissa. Are the PDFs from before used at all in these new auto graded courses? So I used the PDFs directly when I was working on this to see which assets were used. So it was a lot of making sure all the topics that were covered in the PDFs made it into this course. What I also like to say is um, with the question that was just asked about copying a folder, if you do wish to ever add those PDFs um, that are, we, we have a course that you can copy those folders into this course as well to add those PDFs if you would like those as an additional resource within this course, you can do that copy of course folder as well into this course or your own course that you've created yourself as an instructor. Right, and I think the goal too is this, um, that Lizzie made this course so you wouldn't have to use the worksheets and you wouldn't have to do manual grading. Um, you can use this instead, but definitely you can use it in addition to the PDFs if um, folks are still interested in using those. Um, we thought this was a really, um, you know, neat way to allow you those editing capabilities, like Lizzie said, um, and that you'd have something to start with, um, but yeah. Yeah, sometimes the PDFs are great because they're, you know, they're longer and more complete. And some people really do like the worksheets. So you could you could have both um, because right, Glenn, the PDFs are not editable. Um, so that's why we didn't want to spend the time um, in remaking the PDFs into like Word docs or things like that. We thought it'd be better to kind of move them in a new direction to put them in this, um, this quiz bank uh, functionality. So things are editable and auto gradable for you to kind of just take the pressure off if you want. Um, but yeah, using both is also very great. All right, uh, Lizzie, I think you can, uh, I think you can continue. I don't think, think we have anything else. Whole, so these are great questions so far. So I think it, that was my whole overview of the course. One other thing I just wanted to know is that right now we only have A and P one top, A and P two topics. Um, in a normal anatomy and physiology course. And we're working on getting anatomy and Physi physiology one topics um, into the course in the next couple of weeks. So it'll be even more labs. Awesome, all right. Uh, we have one question from, I am so sorry if I mispronounce this, from Kayo. Um, is there a feature to track students' activity in the lab, such as the time they spend working in the lab? Um, I'm going to deflect that one to Lori. I'm not sure. Yeah, sure. Um, so the way um, the assignments work in courseware is that all the quizzes, so all the pre and post um, lab quizzes that Lizzie made and the lab activity itself that are the dissection questions, those are all um, treated as quizzes. Um, so you can see in the grade book how long the students spent taking those pre and post lab quizzes and the lab activity itself. Um, one thing that we don't have is the ability to track the time they spend in the a &P app, for example, reading the module. So we don't track kind of their reading and reference material time, but we do track um, the, the quiz times. And uh, we have a couple of comments, uh, one from Marissa um, plotting uh, this, that uh, it's going to be way easier to grade, which yes. 
um, let the platform do the grading for you. And, uh, and one from Deidre um, for you, Lizzie. Um, she says, I just want to applaud your efforts because this saves instructors a tremendous amount of time, especially uh, those having multiple sections of the course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we first spoke with instructors about this, they said it was going to be a huge weight off their back that we're doing the work for them. So happy to do it. <laughs> and uh, from uh, Gloria, uh, who is looking forward to those A&P1 labs and has a question about that. Um, if she found that some aspects of the questions for the scavenger hunt were confusing, can she send comments before we make graded versions? Absolutely. Yeah, the scavenger hunt lab. I think, I'm not sure, Lizzie, if that was going to be in this particular area, but I know um, that's the one that was provided to us um, by Cindy Harley, um, that scavenger hunt one. And we could definitely take feedback on that. We'd love it. Um, I don't know if, Courtney, in the email you send to everybody with follow-up, we could include uh, an email address to send feedback to. Absolutely. Um, we, I usually do if, if anybody has any questions or comments oh, to, to uh, send it to support. So yeah, always. Um, so uh, I'm actually, um, since we've come to kind of the end of uh, Lizzie's presentation, I am going to open up the floor so uh, we can um, get some, some new voices into, uh, into the party here. Um, so uh, we did have a question um, from Vladimir and uh, Vladimir, I'm actually going to unmute you once I find you here in the uh, thing. Uh, oh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, my, as I mentioned, my concern is that <laughs> as far as grading, you still have to go in and, and check the answers because uh, I, I suspect that if there's a misspelling, even if it's one, one letter, um, that it'll be marked wrong. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong in my assumption. I don't think that should be a problem since all the quizzes in this are multiple choice or dissection. We don't have any, we don't include any short answers. Um, I'm talking about the auto graded labs. Yeah, I think what um, Lizzie was saying was that the labs themselves are kind of in the same format as a traditional quiz that you might be used to through Visible Body. So they are multiple choice and dissection questions. So there's no um, free typing area for the students um, to type in answers. But do you mean, are you talking about the PDFs that we showed where the students are typing in the worksheets? Uh, I don't think they're PDFs. Uh, it's in the... Uh, uh, auto graded labs. Uh, I remember going in there and looking at the, uh, I think it was the activities where they, they fill in, they do fill in the blanks. So I may be wrong now. I, I should have checked earlier. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, we don't have a fill in the blank capability um, in Lizzie's course, but um, we do have that short answer question format so that if you wanted to have short answer questions as part of any of your activities, um, you could certainly make them. And then yes, those would be manually graded if you wanted to go that way. But we don't have um, anything in Lizzie's course that's off the shelf, a free typing area. Everything right. is right. Pick an option for multiple choice or select a structure in the, the 3D model. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Vladimir. Um, if anybody um, else has any questions, use the um, the hand raise feature, and uh, and I can unmute you. All right, we have Margaret. Yes, I wanted to know if uh, after a student takes one of these, you can. I assume go back and look at their answers, et cetera, not just get a score. Number one, is that the case? And number two, can you make any comments on what they've done wrong within the, the lab? Yeah, so it, 
has the same grade book functionality where you can go look at the grade, but we don't currently have um, the capability to comment on the quizzes itself for the instructors. Okay. But you will be able to click on to the um, assignment itself and see what your students answered their questions as. So you can see their responses. Um, and if you do choose to go about giving them feedback in some else or a different way, um, you'll still be able to see their answers and how they answered it. Just by clicking on the grade itself in the grade book. Actually, Lizzie, if you don't mind showing that, can you just go into the grade book and then click, oh, yeah. if you have one that has students populated, that would or if not, don't worry. But um, if you click on the grade itself that's highlighted in blue, which turns into a hyperlink, that will pull up the student's answers for that direct assignment. Okay. All right. Uh... Okay, we have, a, we have another question um, from Glenn. Uh, can you print that out? the page that comes from the students' responses. Is that what you're asking about to print out? Yes. Um, Lori, correct me if I'm wrong. I assume technically no, um, but if you can copy and paste that to like, let's say a Google Doc or a Word Doc, you most likely can. I don't know if there's a co copy and paste function, but I, correct me if I'm wrong, Lori. No, you're, you're absolutely right. You, there isn't a copy paste function. Um, so you'd have to go in and do it yourself. Yeah. Or screenshot. I was just about to say a screenshot yeah. as well. Yeah. And what I can do too is I think, I don't know, can I add a screenshot to the chat? I can just show, or Lizzie, I can send you I have a screenshot if anybody wants to see what the, um, like in a multiple choice quiz, when you select the score, you see what the student selected as the correct answer. And then um, if you choose to show the correct answer, you can see, you know, you can see that too, but you will be able to see what the student answered in a multiple choice question. Um, when you have a dissection quiz, you just see if they got it right or wrong. We don't show what the correct answer is, but we show what they selected and if it's right or not. You want to share your screen? Yeah, more? do you want to share your screen, Lori? Yeah. yeah. I think you just have to All right. So can everyone see my screen real fast? Yeah. So this is an example of a multiple choice. So if the student got it right, you see what they selected. And then if you've chosen in your settings to show what the correct answer is, it'll show. So you can see here. Boy, I did not know my ligaments very well or my joints, <laughs> but this is just a sample to show you. Um, so this is what I selected, but then this is the correct answer. So you can do um, in your settings not to show correct answers at all. You can do in your settings to only show them the last time. If you give multiple attempts for a quiz, you can just choose to show correct answers the, the other um, time. And then I'm not sure if I have a dissection quiz in here to see, um, but for the dissection, oh, here we go. Let's see, that one's a multiple choice too. Um, the short answer, just to show you, for those of you who asked um, about feedback, the short answer quiz is the only one currently where you can um, you know, provide feedback. So um, with the dissection, you get that same look and feel of what, you know, how the student did, but you don't see um, you know, a correct answer because we wouldn't show you the structure. And I just realized I was muted. Um, thank you for uh, sharing your screen and showing us that. Um, do we have any any other questions? Oh, yes, Gloria, you are on the air. You're still on mute. Yep, you're still on mute. There we go. Okay. Um, so what you just showed for joints, that's a part of NP1. So do we have uh, these graded dissection quizzes for ANP1? 
you know, thank you for noticing um, the topic of the quiz. I was just actually showing you a sample quiz. I was going into my, you know, fake instructor grade book to show you. Um, so you're right. That is an AMP one topic and that's not yet available, but it, it will be really soon. Good. That was just an example quiz. So I could show you really fast. I was just trying to put my hands on a quiz fast um, to be able to show you what those detailed quiz results look like. That's cool. Okay. <laughs> um, from Renee, uh, what does really soon mean? Lori, Lori, you're, Lori you're muted. That's good. You didn't hear me laugh to myself. Um, <laughs> we're hoping in the next, um, you know, within the next few weeks, I don't have an exact day, um, but we are hoping soon. I think that when Lizzie was embarking upon this project, right, we're like, well, we knew it was gonna come out in January. So we thought it made sense to focus um, on the potential topics that you would be teaching now if you were teaching a typical two semester A&P class. Um, so we're hoping, you know, by, um, hopefully by the end of March, um, We'll definitely keep you posted and I'm sure that uh, Courtney will be sending out an email blast um, the second we have those in there. Oh, um, so they're just in the final phases of um, editorial development right now. So it'll take us a few weeks at least. Yes, you'll need it in May. Okay, good. I feel, I feel like May would be fine. Yeah, May will definitely, they'll be ready. <laughs> Um, any up oh, uh, from and again, I am so sorry if I mispronounce this. Um, kum kum, uh, can one select a few pages from the PDF to uh, the PDF write-in answer sheets to use only selected items? So, in my experience, I think that you need an advanced version of Adobe. Um, Acrobat so that you can edit the PDF um, so that you can remove the pages you don't want and keep the ones that you do. Um, and then in some cases, you're just going to want to double check that those auto populate fields still work. Um, we've had some people where they've split the PDF up and it does it successfully and in some cases it doesn't. But I think when you have that advanced version of Adobe Acrobat, um, you also can make those fields because um, I think a few of our folks and actually Lizzie <laughs> was one of them who um, helped in that project to make those um, PDFs fill in a bowl, which is a word I made up, but you know. Um, uh, all right. uh, Glenn asks, um, in Word, you can also select, uh, or says, uh, in Word, you can also select developer and add a text field. Cool. That's awesome. Thank you, Glenn. And uh, Margaret, I am going to unmute you again. There you go. Okay, this is a little bit off topic, but will we get more histology oriented stuff through visible body? I really, really, really need the histology. The slides are great, but I haven't figured, <coughs> excuse me, out a way to incorporate those into a, a practice quiz or a graded quiz? Are, you, are we gonna get like a histology app? We have a few plans with the histology images. Um, I think for now, our workaround is that you can create a short answer or a multiple choice quiz in courseware and you can screenshot um, the images, because I, as I'm sure you're aware, Margaret, we do have those histology slides in the A&P app. So you could wow. screenshot those. At, that's our workaround for right now, is you could make questions using um, our, our question bank and just add those images. Um, and then we do have plans. Um, you know, our team is very well aware that there are um, anatomy models and images um, in many of our apps that aren't yet available for quizzing. And so we have a very uh, robust list um, of those things. So over time, we wanna be able to add all the microanatomy that we have to be quizzable. We wanna be able to add all those gross anatomy lab views. If you're familiar in the Atlas app, those sort of cadaver style model. Mm -hmm. um, we wanna add those. Um, we wanna add our regional views from Atlas. And then we also, you know, over time, um, 
we want to add really everything. So all the histology images, the beating heart that maybe some of you have seen in the physiology pathology app. Um, so we're definitely aware. We're excited to start working on that. Um, and we'll keep you posted too. Again, um, we always publish release notes every time we make an update or fix um, our support site. We do have release notes, which is probably the best way to see what we're up to. Um, and then as you can imagine, we're always a little gun shy to give dates of when we're gonna do things because things do change or you know sometimes things can take a little longer than we expect. But um, if you're all part of our Visible Body family, you know Courtney emails you the minute um, also something excellent happens. So we'll be sure to keep you posted, but we're very excited to add all those different pieces of context right. that you can quiz on them. Sounds great. Awesome, thank you, Margaret. Uh Sorry, Gloria, I think I asked uh, to unmute you and I didn't mean to. Um, but, oh, um, I'm still here. Does, um, does anybody have any other questions or comments, even if they're off topic? So I have sort of a question about the histology component. I don't know if you guys have played with the histology guide site. It is, it's a freebie. So you could go and you can get an entire histology course worth of slides and a virtual microscope. Basically you could scan from low power to see the whole slide all the way to uh, fairly high power. It would be kind of neat if there was a simple way of in the, in the visible body component of putting in little links in a laboratory kind of way of go to this slide and now look at this and that and the other thing. Um, so it, it just might be something that w if could be done seamlessly would be fantastic. I agree, wouldn't it be so cool? We have definitely looked at these virtual microscope um, sites when we first were doing um, our development of just adding those histology slides to our app. And I agree, they're so fantastic and really cool to use. And I will say that one good workaround for now is that you can create an assignment in courseware um, that can send students out to a URL. So you could actually, um, and if you want, I can show you that really fast, um, just to make sure everybody's familiar um, how you would do that. So what you could do is um, you could come into here and you could create a new assignment. And this is where you pick from the visible body content, as you know, and then this is the link to a URL. So you could make an assignment this way. You could name your assignment. Um, and then all you do is paste the URL in here. And then what you could do is write instructions to your students here in the description. So that's one workaround now. If you wanted to send them to that free site and make an assignment, you sure could. That'd be great. Do uh, up oh, and uh, Glenn says that the University of Michigan also has a great histology site, and you can do a screenshot as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Glenn. That's awesome. Oh. It's me again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so does Yale. You could go into Yale's histology set and you could see them. I, I'm not as impressed about their color balance, but, <laughs> but they do have some fabulous uh, images in there too. Thank you. Yeah, yes, there are thank things. you, Gloria. Mm -hmm. <coughs> see? Uh, 
any other questions? And and if we if we end this webinar, you know, a little bit early, that is that is fine. But if if you have any questions for the team that have been you know kind of burning in the back of your mind, um, now is the time to uh, to ask. So. Right. All right. Yeah. So, oh, sorry, Lori. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, Lori, we'll, um, we can reach out to you too if you wanted to give Lizzie and I some feedback on the scavenger hat, um, labs. Um, we can definitely reach out. We'd love that. Do you want me to unmute? No, nope, you are unmuted. We can hear you. Okay, I took the scavenger hunt lab and just stuck it in a uh, Adobe Pro and I made it all editable myself. I mean, it would be great if it already was, but uh, unless you've done that since the first time I used it. I think we provide it in a Word doc, don't we? I think we do. Word doc. Yeah, so that it should be editable there too. Um, the first yeah. time they used it, it wasn't editable. Oh, okay. So they had to download it and then, you know, do whatever. And, and it was kind of a, you know, not as fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going to say, not as seamless as you like. Um, yeah. yeah, we do have it available. Um, here, let me um, get you my screen again. Why not? Um, Lori, I also just downloaded it and it is in a Word document format, at yes. least what it downloaded to my computer. Yep, that's great. Um, yeah, I wanted to bring your attention here to instructor resources in your account. And this is where you can find, this is where Lizzie went to show you where pre-made courses are. And there's a lot of, um, a lot of stuff here. Um, and in under lab activities and answer keys, this is where um, the PDFs are um, that Lizzie was showing. This is where um, Lizzie actually created these labs too um, that are editable, these ones. So we learned our lesson. So we really enjoyed making these PDFs and this was actually years ago. So we learn as we go. So everything um, else is unlocked. So here, um, these physiology and pathology labs are Word docs. Um, we have some motion, body motion, rotator cuff and ACL tear labs. Um, those are also editable. Um, we have some bio content now. Um, the AR labs, some of you may have seen, those are PDFs and those are because those images are put on the page specifically to be able to respond to the AR component in Atlas. So if they were edited somehow, that AR functionality wouldn't work anymore. So that's why these are locked. Um, but this is the intro to A&P lab worksheets. Um, and that's where the um, anatomical scavenger hunt lives. So this is where you would go to find that. And then yeah, it should download. So that's where a lot of these ones live right now. I think it's downloading here. Here it is. So you can go ahead and save a copy now and you can edit that as you like. So right, maybe it wasn't the case at the beginning, but it is now. So as I said, we definitely have learned our lesson of what, what works better. So we know that editing, editing your ability to edit <laughs> works a lot better. Um, but I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of this page. Um, so there's lots of uh, resources and things here for you. Awesome. Thanks, Margaret. Uh, I'm going to, uh, Deidre, you're on. Deirdre, just make sure that you unmute yeah. yourself. There you go. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't have a question. I um, I think I met, uh, pressed the raise hand by accident. Oh, <laughs> no worries. Um, okay. But it's nice to hear your voice anyway. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. Do we have any any other questions?
And I'm going to bother you again about a little off topic. But you I, are not a bother. <laughs> but I had some problems like when my students go in and download a lab activity. The minute they download it, it's editable. But when they save it, it saves it without any answers. So I've had to give them like instructions like 500 million times about save this on your computer and then go to your computer and open it and it'll open in Adobe, then resave it. So am I right that that, that is what happens? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep, they have to download it. And then when they open it and start typing it, they have to save to their computer. Again, you're yeah, right. Yeah, I totally get it. It's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because, um, yeah, some people know and then some people don't. But that's exactly the right instruction. Um, so they just have to save a copy. So downloading it won't save it. It makes exactly. it available to them. Because they all say, I know I put the answers in there. I, I know. know. <laughs> and then know. there's nothing there. <laughs> Well, I guess the good news is they only have to do it once and then they'll always remember, right? <laughs> well, well, yeah. I'd love to think that's the case, but <laughs> kind of a hit or miss thing with some of them. <laughs> yeah, and it looks like a couple of other people have had similar experiences, so. Any other questions? Oh, um, from Natalie, uh, is this something uh, we're working on to make easier for our students? Well, actually, Lizzie just made their lives easy and your lives easy because now they can just do these, this work in visible body and hopefully it'll be a lot easier for them. Um, but yeah, we don't have a ton of control over Adobe and like the PDF documents themselves. Um, so for right now, I think that's really our best hope is download and then save. Um, but when you use this lovely online lab, they don't have to download a thing. Uh, Candace, you, uh, if you unmute. You, uh, Good you. afternoon. How are you all doing? Hi. I have a question. Um, I've been noticing over maybe the past semester or so when we started using Visible Body that some of my students have tried to outsmart us in the way of actually sharing their assignments. Um, through the PDF activities. Is there a way that you guys have in place to avoid that problem? What do you recommend? Because right now I'm actually making them like print them out and handwrite them and scan them that way to kind of prevent that from happening. Is there anything in place already that you guys have done or something you can do to assist me with this problem? Please and thank you. Yeah, that's, that's a big question, um, right? How can we help prevent cheating and sharing? I mean, what you did sounds great. Um, you know, with the PDFs, they are shareable and students can, you know, take photos and, you know, it's really hard. Um, <laughs> cat tails, you guys see that? That was awesome. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, it's a big question. I don't know if um, Carly or Rachel, you've heard any stories from the field from instructors who have had certain strategies. I mean, I know that students do share things with each other and it's very hard to stop them. In terms of quizzing, um, I had a professor um, at Northern Kentucky University use it and he loved using the pooling of questions option in our quiz feature. Um, that is definitely a an attribute to prevent cheating. It, you basically can select a hundred questions. Let's say you have 20 students in your class and you selected a hundred questions. Each student will get a new random, randomized order of 10 questions each. So no student will get the same 10 questions. Um, and that has reduced it a bunch because then they don't have the same questions. They can't be answering it the same. Um, 
that's one option in the quizzing. I've also heard a lot of professors using Respondus or um, ExamSoft as another one, which um, I'm not necessarily sure what the capability and qualifying things are to be using a dissection quiz within that software, because I know it like locks down the browser and does a bunch of different things. So I've heard professors use that and students still be able to cheat with them as well. So many mixed reviews on all of those different services. Mm -hmm. I'm actually already using the question pooling for the exams and the quizzes. So I'm not having that issue there. It's really coming from the activities with the PDFs because okay. they'll share them, email them. And I have a trained eye to know that I've seen this worksheet like five times already when I'm grading. <laughs> so it's not hard to, to pick it out when you see it, but I'm just trying to discourage it. Right. Yeah. I mean, I guess in one way, moving to using the autograded labs, you could add a bunch of questions, make it a pool and then have them do it there instead of the PDF is is one option too, if you, you know, if you want to. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you ladies very much. Yeah. Um, Glenn has a question and he said, I can select both options. One option is pool. If both options are selected, how does BB handle it? What is the second option you're talking about, Glenn? Glenn, if you want, um, you can um, raise your hand and, and I can unmute you if, uh, if you want to talk, if that's easier. Maybe, I wonder, Glenn, do you mean the options like you see the questions randomized or you can have them in a deliberate order and if you pick pool? There we go, happen? hold on. All right, here I am. There he is. Uh, here you are. <laughs> yeah, I just made over the last two days uh, over 100, 150 plus dissection quiz questions. And part of that setup was, one of the options was pool. I can't remember what the other one, but there was two of them. I think it's just straight numbers or all of them. I, I can't remember, but yeah. I can select the second one? I'm sorry? Would randomize be that second option? Oh, yes, randomize, that's it. Yeah. So if I do, so it'd be pool, yeah, I can show you. randomized pool. Yeah, okay. so when you're making a quiz assignment, this is where, oh, I'm sorry, I have the right thing. When you're um, making a quiz um, and you go to edit it um, or create it, this is where you see. Yes, that's it. Yep, the configuration. So randomized question order, if you uncheck it, that means that the questions will be displayed in the order they appear and you can drag and drop like this. Um, and if you pull questions, you'll see that I, the randomized question order did check off because pooling will randomize here. Okay. Yep. Okay. okay. And then just Natalie, it. And then Margaret, um, I think has been waiting for a little bit. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. uh, this is just a suggestion that I did and actually visible body. I did a, an office hour overdoing this and uh, so those lab activities if I were doing a seated lab students would be working together in groups to do those so I created groups and teams that were private lab groups so that they are doing them together just like they would be doing seated now the quizzes etc no but the lab activities, I tried to recreate the real laboratory experience where they're in the lab together and, you know, group one is working together in group two. And so that way you're kind of doing away with cheating because you're giving them permission to work together just like they would really, really do. That's a really great point. That's a very great point, Margaret. And it brings out the team building exercises in a laboratory experience for like a lab practical, basically. Right, yeah. I use the graded quizzes as my lab practicals. Right. But, you know, I think, you know, three or four heads are better than one, especially at some of the deeper, you know, higher order cognitive type of questions. If there are three or four of them, they're getting more out of it 
because they're disgusting. They're not just smacking down or, you know, where you've got, when they share the stuff, but whoever wrote the answer, it's wrong. So everybody gets it wrong instead of somebody saying, well, no, I don't think that's, that's what it is. So that, that's the way I dealt with that. And anyone can watch um, Margaret's office hour on our YouTube channel. So if anybody has any questions about how she does that, she they can you can watch her office hour there. Yes, and I'll I'll actually be linking to our uh, our office hour uh, playlist in uh, in tomorrow's email, so you won't have to go hunting for it. Courtney, do you want me to put the link in the chat to the office hours list right now from YouTube? Uh, sure. You know what? I actually have it um, right here. So I'm going to post the uh, links to both um, our webinars playlist and our office hours playlist. So that is in the chat. Um, speaking of the chat, uh, we have a question from Natalie. Um, would uh, would you mind uh, showing how to assign the auto graded lab activities again? Um, she may have missed that step in the beginning. So Lizzie, do you Liz, want to show? Wanna, you, yeah. Oh, perfect. So we can show how to bring it into your my courses and um, and move something over, um, like put a lab module into an existing course. So is it just moving the folder over? Is that what? I think, yeah, if you go to your auto-graded labs and then move it to an existing course, that would be great. Yep, Natalie says yes, that's what she's looking for. Okay, so you just go to the carrot on the right-hand side and copy the folder and then decide which course you want and save it. then it will be the first one that appears in that course. Okay, perfect, she got it. Awesome, thank you, Lizzie. And thank you, Natalie. All right, we have about four minutes left. So if uh, anybody has any uh, further questions, now's the time. All right, with three minutes left in the game, I think we can, uh, I think we can end it here. Um, so uh, thank you all so much for those of you who are, uh, who are still with us. Um, uh, all of these questions were really, really great and I think helpful for, uh, for a lot of people. And uh, again, I'm going to be sending a recording of this tomorrow along with um, some follow-up um, information and uh, some helpful links uh, for you. Everything will be in that email. And as always, if you have any questions, um, one, feel free to reach out to our support team. They are so happy to help. Also, don't be afraid to reach out to your sales rep, who are also um, right there and, and ready to work with you on pretty much any 